So when you finish tonight, sign me and slip to bring them to the office for your money. Oh, go on, off you go. Hey, stop those men. What a lot. What's going wrong with you, Charlie? Well, I did my best, Mr. Barney. Well, you've got to do better. It's bad luck that it's raining. We'll put them on the street and kill the show stone dead. Look at them. What a lot. Of all the... Well, I never saw anything like them. Where did you dig up these corpses? Sorry, boy. I shouldn't have said that. You ought to do something. What can I do, Governor? I know. Dress them up as clowns. Plenty of paint. Make people think they're part of the show. I think you've got a brainwave there, boy. Oh, never mind that. Get going. I want those boards all over the town before the next show. Okay, boss. Come on, you lot. This way and lively. Uh, here. Put a diamond in black around your eyes, eh? Fill it in. Go on. I look a proper joker in this lot, Governor. <laughs> now, don't take all day about it, you fellas. Well, well. That looks better, doesn't it? What did I tell you? It makes a difference to any boss. A good advertisement now. Get him out on the road as quick as you can. Yes, boss. Come on, you fellas. Step lively. As soon as you're ready, get outside and pick up your board. I know that face. You've worked in the circus before. Half a jiffy. I'll never forget a face. Uh, you were a clown. No. <laughs> Can't remember everybody. Wait a minute. I have seen you before. You work for me. You were part of an act. Does it matter? Yes, it does matter. I'm getting it. You were a double act, weren't you? A long time ago. Twins. The Delils. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry to see you like this. <coughs> Forgive me, I didn't recognize you. Where have you been? Where'd you go? What happened to you? Why didn't you come to me? I, I was your friend. The Delils. You were a great act. Yes. We were. The Lil Brothers, Jules and George. Which are you? <laughs> you could never tell us apart, <laughs> Monsieur Bond. <laughs> <laughs> Which are you? You never tell me, you know. I'm not a blinking magician. Anyway, it's a darn good act. Thank you. You know, in that big trick of yours, the crowd was so quiet, you could hear a twin drop. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good <laughs> gag, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I'm very glad I came to Paris to see the act. <laughs> very nice of you, Mr. Barney. Yeah, yeah, I always smoke cigars, yeah. Well, you sit down. No, thanks. I say, does anyone know you two apart? I think even your wives get mixed up sometimes. We are not married. Not yet. <laughs> That coin-spinning routine for the dangerous job, very impressive, good bit of showmanship. I know, it's, it's quite true. The coin decides who will jump. Don't say. Well, it's a very original act. I've never seen that sort of work done before in evening dress, you know. <laughs> don't you ever use a net? No, we don't need one. Well, you're very plucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, boys, what about signing on the dotted line? Shabani, will you be our guest? We can discuss it at the uh, Café du Monde. Café du Monde. Oh, I know. Oh, thanks very much. In, uh, in half an hour? And afterwards, perhaps you show me a bit of Paris. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Before I go, boys, let me do a trade secret. Which is which? <laughs> Shall we tell him? Well, he offers us a contract. And the biggest publicity England's ever seen. So perhaps we tell him. This is Georges. And this is you. As like as two peas in a pod. You boys get away with murder. I'll see you in half an hour. The cafe de Mont. You got me, you? Oh, uh, what have you got? Uh, corona, 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 Bolivar, Maestro, Argentina. All right, I'll have uh, two Coronas. Not a Corona, Corona, two Coronas. One Corona, two? 
Twenty francs. How much? Forty francs. Forty francs. Merci, monsieur. Sir, you have a very, very, very lucky face. Mercury, the god of luck is in your eyes. Sir, permit me, please. This I must... Merci, monsieur. This I must do for you. I will give you one million francs for twenty. Oh, yes. I've heard that story before. What's the racket? Oh, simple. You buy one ticket for the Lottery National, you win one million francs. Just like that. My lottery. Hello, Mr. Barney. Hello. Hello, oh, there you are, boys. Sit down. Monsieur, only 20 francs. Come on, you rogue. Leave our English friend alone. Allez. Allez, vite. Monsieur, I maybe I'm the rogue, but the Lottery National, no rogue. <laughs> this lottery, is it genuine? Yes, but uh, you can buy tickets for years and never win anything. Well, I might ever try. Give me the book. Perhaps I'll be lucky. What about you? No, thank you, Mr. Barnett. With my compliments, I'll have one for both of us. All right, use my pen. All right, we must pay for our own tickets. That's all right. Merci, monsieur. Merci, monsieur. And may Allah bless you with great winning. <laughs> I'll keep the ticket. She loses everything. Well, boys, to business. It's a full season. It's April, October. 65, uh, 75 pounds a week. A hundred pounds a week, Mr. Barney. A hundred pounds? I've never paid that to any to please act. But we are not uh, any to please act. 75 pounds a week. Lots of publicity, star We had a very good offer from Barcelona, a hundred pounds a week. A hundred pounds? Impossible. What about you? Surely you don't agree with your brother? I, I never do. Oh, <laughs> what's your figure? Let me think. Uh, I'm prepared to accept... Uh, yeah? A hundred pounds. All right, boys, you win. It's a deal. A hundred pounds is a lot of money. Don't you drink? I always do it for him. Oh. Adieu, Paris. Bon chance to England. Boys, here's success in Blackpool.
audiences. They liked your act, didn't they? Huh? Just a moment. What's the meaning of this note? The gag, isn't it? No, no, just, no, really. I mean, seriously, just a moment. No publicity. We quit. Kind regards. Yours sincerely, George and Shoe. Well, it's a joke. No, no, no joke. We have quit. We go back to France. Back to France. You can't do a thing like that. Everything's all right for you here. Monsieur Barney, we do not like to be pushed around. You promised us the biggest publicity England has ever seen. Have you seen any publicity, Jules? No, I haven't seen any publicity. Have you? No. So, we go back to Paris. Paris. Beautiful Paris. Da, 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 da. Of course, you're pulling my leg. But joking apart, uh, George, you, uh, whichever it is, surely my publicity man, Mike Bergen, has spoken to you? Oh, yes, he was very nice. Good. Came to say hello. Oh, it's Mike Burgess. Hmm, I'll see to him myself. All right, boys. You won't have any further cause for complaint. Mike Burgess. Can I do publicity or can I do publicity? What a smasher. What a layout. Me or the poster? The poster. What are you thinking? One day you'll break down and say something nice to me. I often wonder why I'm so crazy about you. Because I'm smart, that's why. Because I'm going to get somewhere, and you know it. I'm going to lift this fashion parade right out of Barney's lap. I'll take the whole thing over and run it myself. Maybe I'll do a tour. South America. Before I'm through, it'll be Mark Bergen's fashion follies. You'll see. Think we'll get away with it this time? Listen, if this goes over big, we'll say goodbye to this outfit in six weeks. You string along with me, baby, and you'll be dripping with diamonds. We're going places. Sounds good, even if I don't believe it. Here you are. This one's registered for Mr. DeLisle. Oh, I'll sign. Give it here. Looks as like if he's had a bit of a job finding him. OK. Hmm, he directed. Look at this girlfriend's hard after him. Yes, if her name was Lottery National. Barney beat him quick. I'll talk to you later. Bernard, where's my... Oh, there you are. There you are. Now, what do you... What do you think you're doing? Doing what? The eyes in this fashion parade job, boss. I tend to get some publicity for the Delilles. They've been in this country a week. I haven't heard a word about them. But, boss, it'll be the big thing in the show. I've got some smashes. I'm not interested in your ideas. Why don't you do what you're told? But if it's your idea, boss, you said it was great. Oh, my idea, was it? Well, I don't want to hear anything more about it. Well, what about all my work? Get this into your head. I won't have it, see. What's my want some big publicity for the Delilles? This is their first engagement in England. They're stars, understand? I'm paying them a hundred pounds a week. And I want to put over. I want to put over big. But, boss, what sort of a story can I make out of a trapeze act? No story. Are you crazy? Anything wrong with your eyes? Haven't you noticed they're twins? The crowd was so quiet you could hear a twin drop. Oh, it's a good gag. Am I paying you eight pounds a week to tell me there's no story? But, boss... I'll take some up on nine pounds a week and get some value for my money. You silly Bergen. Publicity. What's eating him? Roaring like a liar. Oh, nothing. We're out, that's all. What's up? You, me, the whole follies. Every other thing I've been working on for weeks. Oh, no, Mike. This means I remain a walking sweet chuckle. Oh, right? shut up. And all because of his precious denials. I'm going to get a drink. Me too. What's the matter with Barney? Wanting to cut the best thing out of the show. Well, he has, hasn't he? He's the boss, isn't he? All he's worried about is his precious Delisles. Delil. All right, Delisles. Where'd a couple of ruddy acrobats get me? Hundred a week. Ah, you shut up, Joe. Amazing. Who puts the show over? Who's got the brains around here? What I get for eight mouldy quid a week, and they get a hundred. I'd like to lay my hands on some of that French dough. Oh, what a hope. So that doesn't get us anywhere. Doesn't it? Maybe it does. Jules de Lyle, Lottery, National. 
three premier pre numero double six four double two. You're late, darling. Where have you been? I've been busy. You've got a pack. Pack? What do you mean, pack? Where are we going? This is a solo, babe. You're going. Me? What are you talking about? You crazy? I know. You're tired of me. All right, who's moving in, Mr. Romeo? Now, save the aesthetics, babe. This is business. Big oh. business. Now, calm down. You're going to get your diamonds and your chance to sing your head off. Now, give me some food and listen. You're crazy. You've been drinking. Shucks. We've been chasing chicken feet. I've got something new. It's bigger and better, see? Go on, big boy. I'm listening. Are you like a million francs, Penny, must we? I'll settle for half. When do we get it? Today or tomorrow? Within a week, if we use our brains. Do you remember that letter? What letter? This letter here, this registered one. Oh? One of the Delisle's jewels has won himself a million. A million? Hmm. It says so in this letter. I didn't know you could read French. Ah, education's a wonderful thing. And what a dictionary is made for. So as I can make up, they pay off in Paris on the ticket, presented with this letter. Mm, when are we coming on it? It's his, not ours. Well, he don't know about it. Nobody does but you or me for the moment. All we've got to do is to get that ticket. <laughs> and he'll hand it to us all tied up in pink ribbon. Your cracker. Who expects him to? I've been through their hotel room and they're dressing him like a vacuum cleaner. Might you haven't. You know, you'll land yourself in jail one of these days. Now listen, I can take care of myself. I'm not so sure. Now listen, Penny, my sweet. I've been looking for you, fellas. Hello, Gregor. Meet Gloria Greg, a great girl with a great future. And with no past, thank you. Gloria, meet the famous Delisle, George and Jules. But for the love of Mike, don't ask me which is which. How do you do, Mademoiselle? This is my brother, Georges. I'm Jules. I'll try to remember. <laughs> yes, of course. This is George. I want to talk to you, boys. I'm planning some swell publicity. I want the stories of your life. All the sensational details. Well, if uh, you want them now, you'll have to come swimming with us. We're just going into your English sea. Uh, let us your wedge, please. He means the bill. Will you come with us to the beach? I'd like to. We'll have a swim. Oh, no, thank you. Water's too cold. But our Sunday. How about you? Me? No, I don't swim. Flying accident, you know. We'll talk afterwards. Here, that's on me. No, please. All right, if you insist. How much is the termine poisoning? All caught before you got up this morning, sir. Thank you, sir. What, do you catch him? <laughs> no, sir. I'm no mermaid, thank you. Ah, oh, you look more like a whale. <laughs> Give me one. Well, what next? Yeah. You do what I told you. Yeah. But how will I know who is George? I don't know one from the other. Just you watch me. Seems a shame. They're nice fellows. You play it my way or I'll get some other dame what will. Thought so. Too cold even for them supermen. Oh, did you enjoy it? Oh, not exactly the French Riviera. Mm -hmm. But he says it keeps us fit. So it does. Old-fashioned Blackpool custom. Have one? Jules? 
I'm George. No, thank you. I think I've swallowed a few in their natural state. Do you have Punch and Judy in from? What do you call it? Punch and Judy. Punch and Judy. We call it Polichinelle. Polichinelle. Shall we have a look? <laughs> Don't you like it? Oh, yes. It's fun for children. Then I'm a child. I like it. You'll be very handsome when you grow up, Mr. DeLillo. My name is Shun. Just put it through here like it. One, two, three. Oh! Are you with the circus? I didn't see your name. Oh, I'm not important. I'm just program, chocolate, cigarette. Of course, I'm really a singer. But you know how it is these days. A girl must live. <laughs> I'm sure you're a wonderful singer. It's nothing compared with you. Will you sing for me sometime? Perhaps. Jules, yes, will be late for the show. Mademoiselle, I'll see you later. Au revoir. Me. Got a luck. Yeah. I've been telling George, you two being a couple of twins is obviously a good story. We can build up a twins competition. A very novel idea. Mm. Nice lighter. I hope to see you again. Mm, love to. Oh, wow. Goodbye. See you after the show. I'll be there. Hello. Au revoir. His lighter, Mike. He loves it, see? And you found it. It may be worth a million francs. Oh, Mr. DeLille. How nice meeting you again. Hello. I was hoping I would see you. You live here? Uh, yes, Mademoiselle. I was just going off for a walk. A nice evening. May I come with you? Uh, yes, certainly, Mademoiselle Enchanté. I simply love walking. Do you? Well, then, let's walk. You know, if you're very good, I have something nice for you. Oh, thank you very much. It belongs to my brother. Oh, you're not yours? No. I'm sorry. And the other one. But I'll give it to him. Oh, no, no. No, I will. Uh, is he inside? Yes, he's still in the restaurant finishing his coffee, but... Oh, then, then I'll see you later. Bye-bye. But, Mademoiselle, I thought you loved walking. Good evening, my love. Oh, good evening. I, I was looking for someone. A Mr. DeLille. Mr. DeLille. Yes. Oh, thank you. lost it on the beach. I found it. I'm so glad. So am I. Thank you. You know, you're so careless. It looks very expensive. You should keep it safe where you keep your other valuable. Things I like, I like to keep with me. Tell me, when you saw me here alone, you knew I was Jules? 
Of course, silly. But how? People, as a rule, cannot tell uh, who's who. How did you? Intuition or something. <laughs> <laughs> to your intuition. Thank you. Or something. Give up the act. Well, if we had enough money, we might. Oh, people are lucky sometimes. Why, a cousin of mine won 10,000 pounds in the Irish sweep. <laughs> Your cousin was lucky. Georges and I, we've had tickets in the Lottery Nationale ever since we were so high. But all we win is 10 francs. <laughs> Have you got one now? Yes, but we never win anything. I know. Let me touch it. Then it'll bring you luck. People call me lucky, Penny. And I've never seen a French lottery ticket before. Don't know where it is. You haven't lost it. Oh, no. I know. It's safe. Where? Don't worry. You'll make me lucky. You think so? You have already. I'm sorry. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. When you hold me in your arms, poor George, to sleep on a wonderful night like this. I could sleep if you'd be quiet. I tried to be quiet, but I failed. You'll wake everybody. Are you drunk? Yes. <laughs> I'm drunk, but not with wine. You know, George. Those English girls, you think them beautiful but cold. No, if you know them a little closer. No, nope. they are not cold. I see. It needs Mr. Jules de Lille from Paris to bring about this miraculous change. Perhaps, perhaps it does. All right. Who is this wonderful girl? This uh, not cold English girl. Don't you remember? She brought back my lighter. Oh, Penny. My lucky Penny. Yes. And Mike Bergen's girlfriend. Perhaps she was. But she is no longer. I could get out of him. He said it was safe. Put away somewhere. But where, for Pete's sake? In the bank, under the mattress, behind a picture, where? How do I know? I asked him to show me the ticket. I can't keep asking him. He'll get suspicious. Listen, there'll be somebody else asking questions before long. And it'll be the French lottery people. The lottery official? Now, you hadn't thought of that, had you? Well, I have. And I'm writing him a letter. You? Sure, who else? I'm putting myself over as Delisle's personal representative. Delisle. All right, Delisle. They've had a side accident, see? And they're sending me over to collect the money for him, see? It's a good thing someone's got some brains in this outfit. How would you say, dear sir, I'm in receipt of your letter of the 14th. Cher Monsieur Je Suis. Cher Monsieur? I don't know. And after spending all that time with a Frenchie. Ah, oh, well, with my education, I expect I can wrestle with it. Well, I hope you win. But I'd better go now. He's waiting. And don't worry, he's crazy about me. I'll get the ticket somehow. You're better and quick. Go on, scram. Mike? Yeah? Aren't you pretending you're the DeLille's English representative? Yes, yeah, so what? Well, why not write the letter in English? It's a good job someone has the brains in this outfit. Go on, scram. That's right, that's it. Straighten your back. That's lovely. Oh, look who's here. There you are, dear. Yes, dear. Don't you wish you well? Mm, you look very nice from here. I do. Do you 
What's the time, Wong? 20 minutes past 10. Thank you. Come on, baby. Morning, Wong. Good morning. Morning, George. What happened to you? You know what time it is? I'm sorry. I worked out a new routine. I'll show you. I catch this time. What's the matter? I want to talk to you. We can talk later. I want to get on with this now. Go and change. I'm sorry, Josh. I have an appointment, and I want some money. An appointment? I see. How much do you want? I've had a lot of expenses. Uh, 20, 30 pounds. Well, you can cash your check on your own account, can't you? I'll lend you some till you get down to your bank. I'm sorry, but it won't be enough. My bank manager says there is no money on my account. Uh, I'll have to look into it. No money left? You mean you spent all your savings? Are you crazy? What do you think you are doing? What's that to you, George? It's my money, isn't it? Don't worry, I'll pay you back. All right. Take your girl out. Take ten girls out, but don't go off your head. Thank you. That's my business. No, it's my business too. We cannot do the act without each other. And we won't be able to do it if you keep having appointments. Remember, Drew, we cannot do this. Work forever. We must save. Oh, you worry too much. Always money, money, money. Yes, and your neck. And my neck. We haven't broken our necks yet. We're not going to break them for a few more years. Until then, why, George, I... I want to have a good time. You should try it too sometime. Make you feel better.
I cry. It's all right. It's all right. You don't have to tell me. We're having a lovely time, aren't we? Nice long evenings looking into his gorgeous eyes. A regular love young dream. Couldn't be sweeter, could it? And may I ask where that's getting me? Oh, come on, come on. What's the excuse this time? Or are you two full of your Frenchy spot acrobats to pick them up? Sounds as if you're getting jealous, Mike. Jealous? Nothing. But how long do you think we can go on like this for? Don't you realize the winning number will be published any day now? And we're risking losing a fortune? And what have you done about it? Nothing. Pounds of one a million. Pounds of one a million. Pounds of one a million. I still can't understand why they didn't write to us. Winners are notified of the rule. Uh, uh, it's a miser. What about my ticket? Yes, <laughs> I've won a prize, too. <laughs> no, no. No. No, Monsieur Barney. No. Oh. No, I have to work for every penny I get. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, you do win a prize. Really? Yes. No. Yeah, how much? <laughs> Twenty pounds. Twenty francs. Oh, nice going, boss. That's almost four bob. <laughs> what you do, boys, going to do with your millions? Buy up the boss. I'll take a fiver down. Now, what's it to be? Out of the country, a yacht, a trip round the world? One out of all three, you can afford it now. No, I don't think so. This is for... for when we say goodbye to the circus. And then, perhaps... perhaps a little farm or a vineyard. No, this is for later. What do you say, Jules? George is right. That was our idea. But I think I've changed lately. Maybe I'll want my little farm right now. And the money in my pocket to spend. Here's the champagne you asked for. Oh, thank you, Jerry. Cool, a million. Every time I call you, it's going to cost you a dollar. <laughs> Here's your change. Here's your first dollar. Thanks very much. <laughs> Fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes. Coming, Jules. There's plenty of time, George. You must all have a drink with me. You two over there, come along. Get some glasses. What's happening? It's all right. We've still got a chance if you're quick. Now, Jules is alone in his dressing room, see? And you've got to talk to him. George is the one who's got the ticket. George? Well, then, if he's got it... Look, do your stuff. He's got to get the ticket from George. Tell him it's either you or George, see? Tell him you'll leave him if he don't get it. Make anything, do anything, make a scene. Oh, but it's no use. He'll only think it's because he won the money. Look, I know what I'm talking about. Do what I tell you. Go on, scram. Miss Mike, I don't... Go on, do what I tell you. Darling? You just tell her. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, Jules, aren't you happy? Why didn't you tell me yourself? Now we can get married. Married? What's the matter? Oh, I know you're thinking of your precious brother. 
But why should you? All he thinks about is the money. And it's your ticket. Get it back. You want me to steal the ticket from my brother? No, not, not steal it. But why should he have any of the money? It's ours. Oh, darling, just think what we could do with it. Why we could go away together and... Your brother, he hates me. He's selfish. All he wants to do is to keep us apart. He doesn't care anything at all about you. Forget him. We've been together all our lives. He and I. You will enjoy hearing all this. Will you tell him or shall I? Sure. Please let me think. Now I can show him what you really are. Open his eyes. You, but you won't get it. No, you won't get it. You're going to tell him a lot of lies about me, aren't you? But he won't believe you. Yes, he will. And you'll know it. Gosh, he will. But he's nothing but a fool and a weakling. Well, you're not a man and neither is he. Do you think any girl would fall in love with you? Either of you didn't have any money. Get out! Oh, you wouldn't believe him, would you, Jules? What have you done to my girl? So you've seen her. The dirty, no good little cheat. You're due on now. We are mad. Look at your hands, Jules. Come on. Get up, Jules. We are mad, Jules. And then he left me. He rushed in and... Slam the door in my face. Well, go on, go on. There was a terrific crash. Then they started a fight, eh? Mm. How do you know? I knew it was George, not Jules, in the dressing room when I sent you there. You knew? Sure, I want you to start something. Set them at each other's throats. But why? They're fighting. They're fighting over the ticket, see? They're not. It's over me. Use your head, babe. It's over the ticket. And don't you forget it. They won't make it up, do their act together until somebody comes along and takes care of the ticket for them. You know, you're quite a clever kid when you don't try. See you later, baby. Come along, come along. Let's you know they had to put the liberty horses on. Can I see a minute, boss? How oh, are you? There's trouble with the Delals. They're fighting. The dressing room's wrecked. The Delals fighting? Over that lucky ticket, I think, boss. Where are they now? They're on, but they're four minutes late. Good. Care of 
that ticket for a couple of days, boss. Mm. money, isn't it? Why don't you get someone to look after the ticket until you calm down? I'll keep it for you. Do it to him. Not a nice sort of team to happen in the middle of a show. Still, we'll forget it this time. Safe with me as if it was in the Bank of England. Well, boys, get some fresh air and cool down. Night. I've got it all worked out, boss. Just what you wanted. A swell story. Story? What about? About the Delisles. Not about the fight? Of course not. About the lottery win, boss. Lottery? Now, the way I've worked it out, it's a front-page story. The local papers will eat it up. When you were out of the act for a fortnight at least with an injured wrist? Yes, but I've got an idea about that, too. He rinsed it, saving a kid from the man-eating tiger. That way we can boost the menagerie as well as the act. I see. Well, go on. Well, then we build up a big welcome for the hero when he comes back to work, see? All right. What are you waiting for? Well, there's only one snag. I've got to have a picture of the winning ticket. I've got one of the twins, but I've got to have one of that. Picture of the winning ticket? Yeah, I'll get an enlarger made for the papers. No, can't part with that. It's far too valuable. That's true. Oh, what can we do? Wait a minute, I've got an idea. I'll make a copy of it right here in your office. Well, I don't think there's any harm in that. I can get the size of the wording and do it right now. There you are. Never think to look at it. It's worth all that dough, would you? It's a cinch. It'll make a swell three-column splash. Let's see. Lottery National, double six four double two nine. There. That'll do it. It'll be a rush job, but I can handle it. It'll catch tomorrow's papers if I work fast. Thanks, boss. Huh, maybe you're smarter than I thought. You'll be surprised. Just wait. That's what she's done. Oh, so you don't understand plain English. She's gone. I'm letting her room. They might when they're tidy. She gets the sun in the morning. If you're a friend, perhaps you'd like to settle up what's outstanding. I beg your pardon? To settle up what's outstanding. Where's she gone? Gee, that's what I'd like to know. And where's me three weeks' money? Gone with that fellow of hers, I shouldn't wonder. The fancy dark-haired one. I don't mind telling you that if I don't get satisfaction, I'm going to please. I'm not having people leaving this house without so much as a thank you, just walking out. Some people might have the decency to settle up what's outstanding. They're fair the whole world over. How much? Uh, four pounds ten and a shilling for the gas. <laughs>
Nothing matters. After all this, if you agree, we would like you to free us from the rest of the contract. We've talked it over and we've decided to go back to France. Perhaps finish with the trapeze. Well, you know, as well as I do, it's not easy to get a top line act in the middle of the season, but this trouble and jewel hands. All right. I'll stretch a point. I'll let the contract lapse. Thank you, Mr. Barney. We both appreciate everything that you've done. Oh, the ticket. <laughs> I nearly forgot. I hadn't forgotten. Thank you. And uh, we shan't forget you, Mr. Barney. Uh, now. No. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Mistaken, monsieur. Our ticket wins a million francs. Oh, monsieur, the Lottery Nationale does not make mistakes. This ticket wins 20 francs. Yes, but we won the first prize. We've come from England to collect it. The name is Delisle. Be so good, if you please, to look it up again. Eh bien. De, 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 De Lille. Oh, voila. Yes, that is correct. De Lille, he wins the first prize. Hmm. I'll speak to the chef de personnel. Moment, monsieur. Monsieur, I have spoken to the chef de personnel. The correct ticket and the official letter of notification was presented and the money paid. Paid to whom? Whom? To Monsieur Jules de Lille. Jules de Lille, Jules de Lille, Monsieur, what are you talking about? I am Jules de Lille. It's me, I'm telling you, I'm Jules de Lille. Jules. This man, this man was a criminal. Monsieur, you try my patience. The ticket was correct. The letter was official. We followed regulations. The Lottery Nationale does not deal with criminals. No, I know what do, Monsieur. Barney made a mistake. Oh, no. Barney didn't make a mistake. It was Mike Berg. Yes. Yes. Please pardon me while I prepare my lunch. But I do not care for any but my own cooking. The ticket you said was taken from you in France. We have told you it was stolen in England. Oh, that raises a very interesting legal point. The ticket was bought in France. Pardon, s'il vous plaît. It was taken to England, stolen there, and presented again at the Bureau de la Loterie Nationale in Paris, you say? Yes. We have told you the whole story. We want to know how we can get our money back. Oh. It is a point in law. In fact, gentlemen, the legal process of two nations are involved, France and England. In my opinion, you shouldn't be advised to proceed against Mr. Bergen in the French court for safe. But it might be possible for you to return to England and then apply to the English court for Mr. Bergen's extradition. George, we are wasting our time. 
please. If Mr. Bergen were convicted for serves in England, and then, after he has served his sentence, you could apply for civil proceeding in order to recover the proceeds of the sale of the ticket. You could take civil proceedings either in France or in England. Such process, of course, would involve in very heavy expenses. And you may find that Mr. Bergen is insolvent and then throwing good money after bad. How much will all this cost? Who knows? 12, 15 thousand francs. How long? How long will all this take? Who can say? Six months, one year, two years. Man, the thief has done to us. Yes, yes, your money! No, 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 not just the money. It tricked us into fighting. The only person who ever made my battle in me fight. And you, you gather points of law. Did you ever nearly kill your brother? Nearly drop him. Forty feet. Or have a wretch of a woman set at him by a man. Break the face between us. I'm sorry. We must find Mike Berg. First, we must go back to work and get some money. By Lulu. <laughs> Who is that? The girlfriend? <laughs> oh, no, no. No, that is Lion. He likes Miss Sauron. Thank you. I'm sorry, Matthew Bergen doesn't live here. Thank you. He's short, he's dark. His name is Mike Bergen. Perhaps uh, describe him? Uh, he's a man. Uh, he's short. He's dark. He's got more money to throw about than usual. Oh, more did you hear many people do that? <laughs> His girlfriend. She's English too. She's uh, fair. Very beautiful. There's one thing. When he smokes, he's got a funny way of smoking. He bites his smoke. Oh. He might do know. Yes. The man who bites his smoke. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, I will tell you how good it is. Oh, good. Can I help you? All right. I'll do it. Yeah. Hello, Mike Bergen. You haven't forgotten us, have you? Hello, Penny. Or is it Gloria Gray? Well, well, well. If it isn't the famous Delisle, I'll friend the moon. We are no friends of yours, Mike Bergen. We're here on business. Well, what can I do for you, boys? The ticket. The ticket you stole. So? That's a harsh word to use to an old friend. We want our money. You see. No education. No manners. You bothering you, Bob? That's all right. My friend's just a little confused, that's all. You're pushing us too far, Bergen. You stole that ticket, you and that girl of yours. Leave her out of it. As for the ticket, don't you remember pointing me your agent? Or perhaps you don't remember I wanted off you in the game of poker, no? You better watch out. We'll have the police on you. Police? What for? You can't prove anything? If you could, you'd have done it long ago. They run along like good boys. Here's a couple hundred francs for you. 
I'll get you. Good night, boys. You hear what the boss says? The boss says good night, boys. Yes, walk. of his brother, Monsieur Delisle will appear this evening on a trapeze, alone, in his great solo act. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Delisle! <laughs>
from Blanvel, gentlemen. From the Prefecture. You are Georges and Jules de Lille. Yes. There are one or two questions I should like to ask you. We are prepared to answer any question. Merci. But it is a very difficult case. I know that, of course. You see, I have two clients, and we have to safeguard both their interests. Zikor! Pardon. Gentlemen of the jury, none of the prosecution witnesses, including the lion tamer and the ringmaster, have been able to identify which of the accused brothers did the act in the circus on that eventful night. Not one shred of evidence has been brought against either of these men. The examination of fingerprints has failed to bring about any conclusive evidence either against Georges or against Jules de Lille. The car, the trapeze bar, all bear fingerprints of both men. And the gun does not bear fingerprints of either. In the name of the prosecution, I protest. The defense counsel is out of order. He's making his defense speech now. Monsieur le Président, surely it is quite clear by now to the court that this identification is meaningless. At the time of the murder, the murderer was wearing makeup and costume of the Delisle Act. Therefore, I demand that both brothers should appear in court in full makeup and costume so that my witness can then try to identify them. In my view, this is quite unnecessary. We cannot have the accused parading in fancy dress in this court. These two men stand here to defend their lives. 
It is your duty to see to it that justice be done. All justice! Hmm. The court decides to adjourn in order to enable the accused to appear in the same costume and makeup as they were wearing on the night of the murder. Uh, what did the police gain, Lark, eh? I wonder how she knows them apart. <laughs> I couldn't. Just your left hand. The defense must have some plan to confuse them even more over their identity. Each one says he was on the trapeze. <laughs> what an alibi. It's a dual alibi. Bring in the accused. Silence! Madam, you have told the court that George Delisle murdered your husband. Point him out, please. That is George. No, that man is Jules Delisle. I protest. I confirm. The man Madame Bergen pointed out is Jules Delis. I was informed by the defense of the position each brother would take up in the dock.
couldn't hold him much longer. He didn't move. He was dead. You tried to find out which it was. Jules. Charles. Charles. Jules. <laughs> you could never tell us apart, Mr. Barney. No. I never could. Which are you? I'm sure. Sure. I never could understand why you should disappear. I thought I... I could get away from it all. <coughs> Can't I help you? Surely there's something I can do to help you. There's nothing you can do for me. Nothing. Since my brother died, swinging from a rope, like a murderer. Murderer? Well, I suppose it was fate. After all, George had to pay for his crime. It was a murder he committed. with me.